Hello and welcome to Launch Code Decoded, where we go behind the scenes of the hottest tech events, products, and services. Today, I am joined by Jeffrey Platt. Jeff, it's so great to have you here. Oh, thank you, Megan. It's great to be here. Yeah, I love picking your brain and hearing all about the latest emerging tech and your thoughts on it. So let's start with an easy question. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Sure. So my name is Jeffrey Platt. I am currently the technology product director at a company called Falcons Beyond. Uh, we design theme parks, we design attractions, uh, and I handle and manage all the technology basically that goes in behind the scenes into all of our attraction design uh, and into all the different technologies that we basically focus on and look into uh, inside of basically all of the location-based entertainment complexes and theme parks that we work on here at Falcons. So you know a whole lot about a wide variety of topics. So let's start a little bit with uh, an artificial intelligence focus. Ooh, AI. That and is how that's a gonna hot be used trend in... and item recently. Right. I, originally, I kind of wanted to talk about, you know, how it's going to be used in Pro AV, which I still do. But I want to talk about how ChatGPT is impacting that most of all. And, you know, uh, they did the public release a few weeks ago of GPT-4, mm -hmm. but when that came out, Elon Musk, Steve Wozniak, and thousands of others are calling for an immediate pause, six-month pause, on the training of artificial intelligence systems more powerful from chat GPT-4. And essentially in the article, and you can go on launchcode.com and read some articles about this, but one of the things they essentially say in the letter is like, robots are going to take over AI is going to take over the world if we don't figure out how to control this and we need to take that pause so that we can do it but others like Gary Kay think that they're just way behind Microsoft and want that time for themselves so what are your thoughts on this it's quite an interesting topic it's definitely a, a very controversial topic to touch on because it definitely touches upon the ethics of us as humans, who we are versus the intelligence of machines and machine learning. Um, it's funny because I've recently been reading a book by Dan Brown called Origin. Uh, and it, it, it kind of encapsulates a lot of what we're, what we're seeing today and what we're discussing today in regards to artificial intelligence. Um, but inside of our industry and looking at it from the professional AV industry and from the creative industry, I think it's going to have tremendous enhancements and impact in the way that we work and the way that creatives work inside of the industry and the tools that we use to be able to create them. We've already seen ChatGPT being integrated into Unity. Um, there's a plugin that just recently came out that is uh, usable inside of Unreal Engine. Uh, and then we've also got all of these other creative tools that are already in play, like Mid Journey, uh, Dolly, and uh, all the other ones that are, are basically out and about. Uh, Stable Diffusion is another one. A lot of people have been experimenting in them lately. They've been enhancing them lately. Those workflows have just been evolving and evolving more and more. And I think we're going to see a lot of great things actually come out of the, imp uh, the implementation of ChatGPT and AI inside of these different applications because it's just going to enhance also uh, it's going to enhance the, the productivity, but it's also going to um, basically help promote the performance of people and help promote the performance of the way uh, artists work today. So I'm really actually quite excited about it. I am too, to be honest, you know, we had, AI month in March. And one of the things we did was I actually had chat GPT because it was AI month, write a few articles about <laughs> AI and digital signage, AI and the fan experience. And I, I edited them for style, but that was about it. And actually they were pretty spot on and I think really informative, but it's mm -hmm. to me, I think it's just going to enhance what I do. I don't, I'm not afraid that it's going to, you know, take over my job because I think there's always that human touch that we need. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you anymore. I mean, some of the big benefits, too, is going to be inside of software programming. Uh, GitHub just recently launched their Copilot, which is an AI-based version of or derivative of, of ChatGPT uh, embedded inside of uh, these different IDEs, like inside of Visual Studio, 
Uh, and that is already helping a lot of programmers tremendously in just basically being able to write code more quickly, more efficiently, and be able to deploy even better experiences and better applications for us. So it's, it's pretty wild right now. It's like the wild, wild west. And I think that's why we're seeing like some pushback right now on people wanting to pause it because people have, I think, just adopted it so quickly uh, and are so curious about it to see what the limitations are, how it's working. And now, you know, some of the higher ups are looking at it going, yeah, we might want to <laughs> we might want to put the brakes on this a little bit and and try and see. I think strategize maybe a little bit more on how it gets handled, and how it gets deployed. Let's move on a little bit. The metaverse is a very broad term. How would you define <laughs> it? How, how do you find the metaverse and how do you see it being used in ProAV specifically? The metaverse has been one of those terms that's been thrown around a lot, you know, over the last few years. And I think when it came out, people, of course, didn't really truly understand what it was. And I don't know if they still truly understand <laughs> what it is, which is why I'm asking you to define it. I think we're still trying to figure it out, actually, in a lot of ways. But it's, it's starting to gain some ground, and it's starting, to it's starting to gain some traction. And people, especially, again, inside of the entertainment industry, starting to grasp it a little bit more on how it gets incorporated and how we can utilize it inside of building out different experiences uh, to extend actually storytelling outside of our normal real world per se and move that out into kind of an extended digital version of our reality. So, you know, a lot of technologies like uh, AR, AR has definitely enhanced and helped us evolve metaverse and metaverse based applications so we're starting to see a lot more practical use cases and being able to take uh, augmented reality applications where you can augment your avatar for example or your digital persona back into the real world and then kind of gamify that so that you can extend basically physical realities into other physical spaces that can be completely augmented in time so that's one of the applications where we can see kind of one part of the metaverse being brought into into the pro AV space. Of course, there's Web3, Web3 based technologies, blockchain. Uh, we were talking about this a little bit before, but blockchain has a huge benefit in just in the technology itself on how it can be uh, implemented into a whole bunch of different types of technologies that we use. So we were talking about content a little bit uh, earlier and content protection, protection and policies. That's a great use, I think, of blockchain moving forward into the future. Yeah, I'm excited to see how all of this plays out. And last question for today, what are some of the advancements that you're seeing in extended reality right now outside of, let's say, virtual production? Um. I think we're starting to look at, again, augmented reality. I'm going to bring that back into play because it's going to be, I think it's going to be such a huge thing in our lives moving forward. We're starting to see there's a lot of hype around Apple's wearable that's going to be released a little bit later on this year. Um, we're seeing a whole bunch of different types of AR related technologies that are coming onto the market very quickly. Uh, a lot of companies are are adapting them. They're looking at different ways to utilize them inside of uh, inside of different types of spaces, and I think that uh, is where a lot of the potential kind of stands inside of our industry moving forward is going to be how these different types of technologies are are adapted into all the different workflows. Digital signage, I think, has there's a huge potential of AR based technology in there. Um, and we've just kind of started to scrape the very tip of that iceberg. So I think over the course of the next mainly few months to few years, we're going to see a lot of huge jumps inside of the uh, augmented reality space. We just wrapped up our launch code out of this World Experiences Awards, and there was some AR in there. And I think one of the things that's really cool is immersive advertising or just like essentially allowing people to create these creative firms. Buck in particular is the one I'm talking about. They did this augmented reality for a an art installation. Essentially, you can design things on your phone and it would pop up at different places. And 
Mm-hmm. I know I've done interviews with a, an actual artist. Her name is Human, and she does her paintings with an AR filter. So when you're in the space, there, there's the painting, and it's stunning. But she also does projection mapping on it sometimes, or she'll take it. And if you use an Instagram filter, it makes the painting 3D and different. You're seeing art in all these different ways. And I'm really excited about the art, tech is art possibility of that. Oh, I, I couldn't agree with you anymore, Megan. Uh, it was kind of funny because there's I, I've always loved to, I've always been on the bleeding edge of technology and been trying to look at these new products and things that have come out, uh, especially a lot of these startups, you know, that are coming out with these really new, interesting types of technology. Some of them, some of them are successful, some of them are not. One of them that I, I thought was maybe a little bit ahead of this time was a product called Lightform. Um, you might be familiar with it. It was kind of this this depth camera device that you slap on top of a projector uh, and then you could run through a calibration sequence, but it had a creative tool where you could start to literally draw and stencil things kind of on walls or in a projected form. And I've always thought that had just an amazing amount of potential. Unfortunately, you know, as of recently, it, it uh, they, they closed their doors. Um, but I think if that product was given another life and another chance moving into even the technology that we have today, it would probably be a lot more successful. So um, that side of the industry on the digital art side just has so much, so much to gain. There's also, uh, I just heard recently here in Orlando, uh, there's a digital kind of web three metaverse, um, but augmented reality museum and social space that's coming out. It's called Verse, V-E-R-S-E. And uh, they've been creating some really interesting AR-based experiences that you can kind of go and experience with a group of friends. And it walks you through step-by-step, kind of like a digital museum, I guess, if you will, where you're all kind of augmented inside the same space. So I'm looking really forward to hopefully getting a sneak peek and and getting into uh, one of those facilities sometime soon. That sounds amazing. So before we wrap up today, I just want to make a little announcement. We're really excited that Jeff is going to have his own video cast on launch. Yay! Yay! (laughs) Called ET Insights. It's going to be coming out within the next month or two. And why don't you give us a little bit about what that's going to be? Sure. So ET Insights, we're going to be talking to a whole bunch of different technologists and artists and integrators and basically thought leaders in technology on upcoming episodes. And we're going to basically just be talking about all this amazing technology that's coming out in front of us, how it's being applied in different spaces, and hopefully get some insights about where where things are trending, where things are going to go, and how these technologies are going to affect our, our lives inside the professional AV space. I'm so excited. So stay tuned to Launch Code to check that out. Jeff, if people want more information, where can they find you? Best place to find me is on LinkedIn. Uh, My LinkedIn profile is pretty easily found just typing in my name. Uh, But I think that would probably be the easiest and best place to reach me. And that's Jeffrey with a G. Jeffrey with a G. (laughs) Thanks to all of you for tuning in today. We'll catch you on the next episode. And you can catch the first episode of ET Insights coming out soon. Both are going to be on launchcode.com. That's L-A-V-N-C-H-C-O-D-E.com. And we'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.